Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel or our website. Email me. It's in the description below, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona, reference 116515LN, 40 millimeters in Everose red gold. The watch features a ceramic bezel and the Rolex Oyster Flex strap bracelet. 40 millimeters in diameter, the Timepiece is a standard size for a Daytona, nice and slim by Rolex standards, at only 12.4 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, measuring a reasonable 47.6 millimeters. So if you want to wear this watch on a small wrist, the strap is the way to go. 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs, and you can see Rolex uses an end piece to better match the strap to the case, preventing any daylight from being visible and creating the integrated aesthetic of a bracelet. Now, pop open the clamshell and the lift lock trigger, throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, very comfortable, flat flush, easily worn underneath formal sleeves. You can see that it's not excessively broad across the wrist, and because the strap bracelet pulls straight down, you can wear it on a smaller wrist. Wear with confidence on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Once again, your frame of reference here is 16 centimeters. Taking a quick look at the Oyster Flex hardware and software, the Oyster Flex is actually both in one package. That is a proper name for the strap bracelet that features a titanium alloy band internally, so it can never tear completely. It is a bracelet because of that metal band that runs through both sides. You can see that there is a little striation that runs down the center. There's also a taper, both in its profile thickness and in its taper down to the bracelet. So this looks a lot like a bracelet in terms of its actual flow, fit, and integration with the case. Now, I said down to the bracelet. I meant down to the clasp. The clasp is a nice piece. Red gold like the case. It is a deluxe fitment with a easy link system internally. So you have five millimeters of in and out adjustment. You also have three drill divots inside. So you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp for fine tuning. All High polish finish internally. You can see the beak and the hook system lock, locks first, and then the clamshell locks again with a little kerf underneath the coronet. The five point Rolex crown to allow you to dig in your nail and open the clamshell lock. So you have that double locking mechanism. Now there's also a bellows system underneath the strap bracelet, and you can see that is there to cinch it down to your wrist for a more secure fit, but also to create an air pocket to vent your wrist on a hot day. The Daytona case is lithe, elegant, sensuous, and sinuous, graceful. Anything but the squared off and sheer-sided super case you see on the GMTs and Submariners. This is a graceful, handsome, almost dress watch inspired form. It looks fluid. The bezel is ceramic and nearly impervious to scratches. You can see there's a rose gold deposit inside it to create the calibrations and it is a tachymeter scale. So you can use the chronograph and two fixed points such as the start and finish of a flying mile or kilometer. And that tachymeter can allow you to gauge the speed of the object over the course. You've got red gold hands, indices, and the five point Rolex coronet so they will never oxidize or tarnish with time. And I should mention that ever rose red gold why called Ever Rose? Because it has a lot of copper in it to give it that rosy, almost red appearance and a lot of platinum. So unlike conventional red gold, it will not fade with time. There are lovely dished registers and you can see they feature a concentric circular guilloche or azurage in matching red gold with red gold chapter rings, black lacquer base with red gold gilt style printing and the screw down crown, which is a trip block and screw down chronograph pushers impart a 100 meter water resistance. The timepiece has a solid case back, so you're just getting more precious metal rather than a $30 sapphire on the reverse side. And inside the case is Rolex's own movement. This is the caliber 4130 launched in 2000. 44 joules, automatic winding, bi-directional. It uses a rotor bearing rather than Rolex's previous jeweled staff for better shock resistance. The three-day power reserve beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It does have a hacking or stop seconds function. Actuation is crisp thanks to a lateral clutch, and it is smooth, or I should say, it, actuation is crisp thanks to a column wheel, and it is smooth thanks to a vertical clutch. The vertical clutch allows you to start and stop without any jump. A lateral clutch would have built-in jump or stagger. The vertical clutch also allows you to run the chronograph continuously without any hazard, wear, or tear to the movement. It is a COSC chronometer, but Rolex goes beyond testing it in six positions, not the chronometer 
5 and as a fully cased up watch, not the bare movement of the chronometer test. So Rolex, releasing this watch from the factory, attests it will run minus 2 or plus 2 seconds per day or better. Hence the term superlative chronometer. It is COSC, but it is more. Now it features a full balance bridge with a free spring index for shock resistance, an overcoil hairspring to help it earn that chronometer certification by keeping equal time in every position. That's what an overcoil does for you. And then the overcoil is made of a niobium zirconium blue oxidized anti-magnetic alloy. Rolex calls it power chrome blue. So this watch is water resistant, shock resistant, resistant to timing deviation, and of course, anti-magnetic. It's the full suite, the ultimate motorsports chronograph and the ultimate motorsports memorabilia for the fan. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the red gold Rolex Daytona blue by night. That's Rolex's own proprietary chromolite blue loom.